So this, uh, the Hunt to Drum project started in 2022, which is what the Warriors Red Road is based on. Mm -hmm. And it was a, a project that stemmed from another project that we did as a collaborative mm -hmm. that started probably about seven years ago now, actually. Yeah. And that was looking at um, different men's masculinities. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were particularly involved in the Indigenous Men's Masculinities Project. And from that, we decided that we really had to try to evaluate a, a Hunt to Drum project to see, to see how to evaluate culture yeah. and, the, and the bonus uh, of having a conjunction of a project and and a partnership with Brandon University is that we had at that time a men's group that was just starting to get going so really utilizing land-based teachings and an opportunity to extend ourselves from an urban center and retreat back to the land for those cultural teachings we found this as an opportune time to really document and and raise awareness but really to tell a story because one of the things that we found is that there were no books available that actually talked about male masculinity or indigenous men's mental health and what that looked like from a from a perspective of injured spirits so this was a, a fantastic yeah. partnership that we had in being able to work with our sisters mm -hmm. at Brandon University and as part of a research team and really elaborating a little bit more on what it meant to take indigenous pedagogy through an educational perspective and then deliver it through land-based teachings to a an audience of men right of, of city men uh, who never really had that same attachment that a lot of our cousins or uncles had uh, at, with their home communities and being able to just go out on the land and, and, and hunt and harvest uh, for your family and your community so this was Ideal. Mm -hmm. It was ideal. Nice. Um, okay, so this is specifically for Jason, but of course, if you want to, you know, kick some in, uh, stuff in later, you can. The byline of the project description says connecting Indigenous men to culture through teaching, ceremony, and land based land based activities. Can you talk a bit more about that? I guess you kind of covered that, but absolutely. If you have anything else that you want to add to it, when we talk about the number of years that have gone into the delivery of this project. If we can go back to that day one where essentially we had a group of men who didn't really know much about where they came from, their own identities, but at the same time too, a lot of us grew up in cities. So we didn't have the formal training of just being able to prepare ourselves to go kill an animal and then know what to do with it <laughs> after that, right? So. If I think about where we started and then allowed that door to open up and provided the opportunity for men to be trained, to be certified properly, to have the confidence and understanding of what it meant to hold uh, a, a piece of machinery or artillery that was actually going to help you harvest something. But again, the next lesson on top of that was how do we harvest it and how do we clean it? So every step of action that we had involved was very interactive so there was no sitting in the back seat and I gotta say even our, our research <laughs> team you know we we were elbows deep inside that moose right and just embracing the understanding but at the same time too understanding the relationship that we as individuals were making with that animal and with that land and what it was going to do for our families and for our elders in our community by, by harvesting this meat at the same time too, we knew that this was a process of drum making. Yeah. And rather than just going to a store and buying drum kits, we really wanted to take that additional step in having men understand that the gifts we make sometimes don't come from a store. They come in that teaching and that delivery of understanding and preparedness of the next step. So over a number of months, we worked with that meat, we fed our families over the winter, we brought out those hides again in the springtime, we cleaned them, we worked with them, we made drums, and then we learned how to use them. So tonight, the experience that you're going to be witnessing of is how these men have not only found who they are and found their identities, but also found their voices. And when we sing those songs now, we don't just sing them for, for frivolous reasons of just being singing, we understand the words behind them and the languages being used with them. So all in all, it's tied us together. It's made a strong brotherhood uh, of men within our community. And ever since the delivery of this program, we keep having men come out 
and join the activities and finding their own paths, but being circled and embraced by their brothers by doing this as well too. You guys are pros at this, okay. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so often West-centric research highlights the neg negative aspect mm -hmm. of Indigenous men's attempt to integrate themselves into the general society, neglecting, say, their roles as fathers and leaders. How has this uh, program addressed this issue? Oh. I think it, that's the core of this program, yeah. is these men are learning to do this appropriately and do it in their own culture and do it with their own teachings. And I've seen, I've seen men enter the program four years ago that were lost and I've seen them now become leaders in their own communities. You hear anecdotally stories from their families about how life has improved at home. Um, you hear, you see them out being proud, wearing their proud shirts and just being proud men. And you know that it's because they have this brotherhood behind them Absolutely. and they have the teachings behind them and they have the ceremony that they're able to share together and it really is a phenomenal thing to witness. Colonization had a big effect amongst Indigenous communities and nations right across Canada. When we think about the fracture that happened within our families at that time, a lot of our fathers didn't know how to be fathers. A lot of our grandfathers didn't know how to be grandfathers. So when it came to being men, we didn't understand what it meant to be a kichita or a gichita, right? A warrior. What does it mean to be a warrior? Well, it doesn't mean putting on your colors and going out on the streets and hurting somebody else. How do we protect society? Mm -hmm. How do we protect our families and our sisters? How do we make sure that we as men know that in our lifetimes, we can end a cycle and start a new development? That is amazing in itself. And one of the things that we've seen in this is that reunification of families at the same time too. So now we've got families who are so disrupted and fractured by not just colonization, but just happenings of life, who are now looking at each other in, what changes did you make to make a healthy pathway for yourself? And how do I do this with you? So now we've got families coming together. Now we've got men returning home and being fathers rather than just being roommates, right? So this has really been a, a twofold in itself in regards to creating safe space for men, but allowing us as men to be the facilitators of that at the same time too. And, and I, I believe a lot of that comes from our own vulnerability because as leaders in community, quite often people look at us and go, how did you get there? Well, we got there because we didn't give up. But at the same time too, we looked for support and we asked for help. And that's quite often something you don't see a man do too often. So this has been a great experience, not just for the men in our group, but for the men and the groups that we've been able to inspire right across Canada. <clears throat> uh, how important is it for the Indigenous men to feel safe in participating in this program? Uh, Fundamental. Okay. It's it's absolutely needed, yeah. right? Like, sometimes a man doesn't need to actively participate to be a part of something, mm -hmm. but to be included in that circle means that I'm a part of something that is constant, right? And when we take something out of that, when we place somebody in the background, we often get forgotten. We often forget that we have a voice as well too. So to be able to see a lot of these men who at one point yeah. were very, very quiet, mm -hmm. very sheltered, very held back, and not at the same time, very mad and angry and frustrated, mm -hmm. to see them come full circle and understand who they are, and to express love in such a beautiful way now, and to work with others in community, it's astounding the calls that we get now in being able to go and open events, in being able to go with our drums and to help wake up spirit. It's a beautiful thing that we're yeah. doing. Yeah. It was mentioned on the website that some barriers that remain mm -hmm. are the uses of indigenous languages in the program. How has this come about? In like, how did this, the language be forgotten? And also what is being done to address it now? Well, I think that one of the biggest things that you're gonna see is that revitalization of language through songs. Right. And, and that's quite often an easy way for somebody to learn something is to make it entertaining, to make it something you want to learn, right? 
but at the same time too, when do we take that moment to pause and go, what did I just say? And why were those words so important, right? Much like our name, we could have just called ourselves the Good Hearted Warriors, but we decided to receive that name through ceremony and were gifted the beautiful name of Akichita Chante Washte, which is Dakota, right? Which is a beautiful language that we as a group of men now are trying to utilize a lot more. And I think that quite often, one of the things that we forget is that we're always learning, mm -hmm. right? So once we learn something, how do we use it? And how do we make it common to use? So whether you're using it within prayer, whether you're using it in your own acknowledgement or your own introduction, you are bringing back and reviving something within your own spirit that was always inherently yours.